We are nearing the final half an hour mark, and of course, I want to bring in the audience in just a bit. Not quite yet, not quite yet. Told your horses, I will come to you in just a second because I can imagine there'll be a number. But I want to round up this this round before we uh, opening up, and I'm going to come to the three of you to 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 wrap it up. Uh, let me start with Mark. As I said, you wrote a very comprehensive book on the war on terror. And there are U.S. generals who are saying, with the return of the Taliban, now we're seeing a return of Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda is going to be is active in Afghanistan. They're saying an imminent threat, perhaps even an imminent attack on the U.S. could be realistic and feasible within the next five, six months. Is that your understanding? Is that, is that your assessment as well? well Joe Biden said that uh, Al-Qaeda was gone. Uh, from Afghanistan, which is not true. Uh, so uh, we know that Al-Qaeda is still there, and we know that uh, the ties have been maintained over the past 20 years. And actually, there are proofs of that. I mean, for instance, there was a 2019 strike on a Taliban hideout in Musakala, and actually the emir uh, of uh, Al-Qaeda Al in the uh, Asian subcontinent was killed uh, in this operation. Uh, so today, again, the Taliban have to walk the talk on this topic as well. We cannot just believe what they say. They signed the Doha Agreement, and in the Doha Agreement, they said that they would break ties, but we have no control uh, over that. So, I mean, we need some evidence at some point. Right. And here, obviously, I mean, Al-Qaeda is different from ISIS because the Taliban and ISIS are at war. And uh, on the question of ISIS, uh, the, uh, uh, our question is not basically if the Taliban are willing uh, to combat, to confront this group, but if they are able eradicate it. I mean, ISIS has approximately between 1,000 and 500 fighters and 2,000 and 200. Uh, that's quite a lot. Uh, and if, you, if they manage to uh, control some part of Afghanistan, then perhaps they, they can also export uh, their violence to the West or to South Asia. Right. Tatiana, there's no doubt that the hasty withdrawal on the part of the, uh, the United States is a damage to the reputation of, if not credibility, of the US, of the West, of NATO. I think there can be no, no doubt uh, about that. Um, again, we talked about the aspect of schadenfreude, perhaps, that is coming from Moscow and Beijing. Looking at this, how, how lasting do you think uh, this reputational damage uh, truly is to the United States? Judging from where you are based. C'est justement ce que je disais au début, c'est là où uh, le retrait uh, des troupes américaines a été en partie perçu par les Russes comme une opportunité géopolitique. Je crois que c'est Zaki Laïdi qui avait employé le premier jour le terme de « increase the leverage », augmenter les leviers d'influence, l'influence russe dans la région, mais aussi dans les pays qui sont voisinants des régions. Donc évidemment, c'est un grand dommage pour la réputation américaine, dont les Russes souhaiteraient et espèrent bénéficier. Avec la Chine Évidemment, c'est ce qu'on voit en premier, le tandem qui pourrait éventuellement surcharger du problème et euh, peut-être dans le cadre de l'organisation de coopération de Shanghai. De fait, l'Afghanistan, qui a le statut d'observateur dans cette organisation, a tous les pays limitrophes, sur le, euh, sauf le Turkménistan, qui sont membres de cette organisation. Mais on sait aussi les faiblesses de cette organisation qui est déchiré par les contradictions et les blocages, notamment entre l'Inde et le Pakistan, mais il y en a aussi d'autres. Donc la question aujourd'hui, je vois dans les milieux d'expertise en matière de relations internationales en Russie, le sujet qui est brassé, c'est peut-on avoir une sorte de multilatéralisme à la carte au sein de l'organisation de coopération de Shanghai pour gérer ce problème-là mais le problème qui va se poser, c'est le problème entre l'efficacité, donc créer un groupe plus petit pour gérer euh, les, les, le souci de, de l'Afghanistan et proposer des solutions, et la légitimité, il faut que ça puisse être accepté par tous les autres. Mais euh, en tout cas, euh, le dernier sommet de l'organisation de coopération de Shanghai au mois de septembre s'est saisi du problème et a formulé euh, son souhait de voir l'Afghanistan euh, neutre et euh, pacifique. Donc, euh, on va voir quels sont. En même temps, il n'y a, a pas de piste, je ne vois pas de piste euh, concrète qui se dégage. Il est juste question de retravailler euh, cette idée de création d'un groupe euh, au sein de l'organisation de coopération de Shanghai, mais euh, rien de concret pour l'instant. Et puis, je voulais euh, juste dire deux mots. Euh, vous avez dit qui connaît la réalité du terrain. Euh, 
Euh, très honnêtement, je pense que les Russes étaient pas mal au courant euh, de, de ce qui se passait. Euh, ils, depuis 2017, ils anticipaient en fait la, la chute éventuelle du gouvernement Ghani euh, et c'était dans l'espace public, en fait, ces craintes-là sur la fragilité de ce régime. Et je pense que c'est l'un des facteurs qui a poussé les Russes à discuter avec les talibans, ce pragmatisme, cette vision de la réalité du terrain dépourvue au fond de, de l'idéologie dans la meilleure optique possible. Encore une fois, pour les Russes, le vrai problème, c'est moins les talibans que leur soutien éventuel ou pas à différents grépuscules basés sur leur territoire. Juste pour rappel, Vladimir Poutine est arrivé au pouvoir en pleine guerre de Tchétchénie et euh, les franges les plus radicales de combattants au Nord-Caucase étaient soutenues depuis le territoire de l'Afghanistan et euh, l'Afghanistan, la, sous le premier règne des talibans, était le seul pays au monde à avoir reconnu l'Ichkiri indépendante. L'Ichkiri, c'est le terme pour la Tchétchénie. Donc c'est aussi la question, quelle attitude des talibans vis-à-vis -vis des mouvements séparatistes dans les pays avoisinants Right. So, so Russia already had, uh, at least in terms of vision and tactics, a leg up. You're saying they were already arranging themselves for a new reality. And China, as we know, you mentioned, of course, unlike the U.S., has a somewhat pragmatic approach when it comes to conducting foreign policy. So they will be dealing you know, with the Taliban perhaps in a very uh, d different manner. Uh, uh, let's, let's round it up by bringing in MK uh, Narayan one more time before I uh, handed it over to, to the audience. I know you wanted to jump in, sir. No. I I want to be, I'm being I'm the devil's advocate in this point. I think this isn't an issue of, of um, whether the European Union or Russia or, or the Americans. Are. We have a problem. There is a huge implosion that is taking place in Afghanistan. The jihadists across the world have, have, have been electrified as a result. We already see the thing, Al-Qaeda and its acolytes like the Lashkar-e-Taiba and the jaish e Mohammed in in the, in the South Asian context have become one. We see a great deal of revival of the ISIS, particularly the Khorasan group of the ISIS. So these are the, these are the issues. The, there is another problem that people are not talking about. The opium trade has more or less doubled or tripled in the course of the last few weeks. There's nobody talking about it. What are we talking about? We have to stem that. We, we, nations that deal with it. We can't wait for governments to be established before you do. We need to de deal with that problem. Then finally, there is, you have the problem of how do you deal with it? Now, Tatiana was talking of the SEO. Now, the, you start off by saying the SEO doesn't include the United States. So, I mean, we cannot, that's why I referred to a global concert. We require the world to look at this problem because what is going to happen in uh, Afghanistan in the next of, um, a year or so is going to dictate what is the course of events across the world. In the, are you, are, do you want to, uh, to deliver the world to, uh, to the terrorists? There is, the Taliban is, 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 a, is a, what do you call, excretion on the, on the face of the, of the earth in that sense. So we need to deal with it. And I think we need, I think we should have a global concert, a group of nations. We've had that in the past. It should include, therefore, not uh, not only the countries of Europe and this and that, because that, but certainly, I mean, the, uh, one of the prime candidates for that would be the UAE, because it has been done and it's got a now a record of doing many of these things. Certainly a country like India. Over there. How do you keep Pakistan out of it will have to be a major factor, because it is the... Okay. So, please look at this problem from this perspective. Let us not allow ourselves to be driven by old kind of thing. But the United States in particular, needs to show ideological diversity. As, as has been mentioned here, where you can't say we will not deal with this and we will not look at them because of kind of thing. So I leave that because uh, if I think we've run out of time. I have a lot more to say, but that doesn't matter. Uh, most, most definitely. And we will have more to say because we're going to the uh, audience now. I think your point that Afghanistan is one of the uh, most uh, uh, prominent geopolitical challenges awaiting us in the 21st century, I think they can note be no two opinions about this, which is why the World Policy Conference has prominently featured this panel here on the subject matter.